This idea of missions to the average person in the church is an either or question to them. Either I'm involved in missions, I'm an active zealot, I get involved in programs, or I'm just a normal part of the church. That thinking is so wrong. It's not an either or question. Everything needs to be a means toward the overall goal of reaching all nations, of bringing God global glory. So whether you're working in the nursery, somehow you need to be praying for those kids. God, use this child to touch nations. Whether you're helping the homeless, Lord, bless this people. You're praying silently that they could somehow walk with you and know you and end up touching nations. Whatever you're doing, it needs to be a means toward the overall goal of reaching nations. One singles pastor in San Diego said it to me this way. He said, I've got it. I said, what do you mean? He said, I've got it. I said, what? He said, I've been reaching the singles of my church to reach the singles of San Diego. I said, yeah, so? He said, now I'm going to reach the singles of my church to reach the singles of San Diego so that the singles of San Diego can reach the world. I said, now you've got it. Now your ministry is not an end in itself, stopping in San Diego. Now it's a means toward God's global glory. This is not, missions is not a program anybody needs to be starting in their church. It's rather a lifestyle. A lifestyle of keeping up with what God has been doing for 4,000 years. Blessing us to be a blessing to the nations. And we need to start with the children. That's why my wife took what I teach and put it in children's form. So there are children's curriculums to help them understand the story of the Bible, the M&M Teacher's Training Curriculum. It's a 13-week curriculum that you can use for children to give them a vision for the nations. And we need to start with them because with an A greater than B perspective, their entire view of the world becomes distorted. Look at this map. It's got the United States right smack dab in the center. The world revolves around us. If theologies, if this theology was a, a good theology or a bad theology, what kind of theology would you say? Probably like me, you would agree it's a very bad theology. The world does not revolve around us. We did not rip Asia in half as the scissors cut through the world. It's a bad theology. Look at this map. The United States is not in the center. It is off to the left. Nobody is cut in half. Good theology or bad theology? You tend to say that's a good theology, but in reality, it's not. It's a bad theology. Why? You see those two rays? Those two rays represent 15 degrees of latitudinal change. One five. 15 degrees of latitudinal uh, change. You see those two rays at the very top? Those two rays represent 15 degrees of latitudinal change. The same amount of change, but look how much further apart they are. You know what this map maker did? The further he got away from the equator, he began to open up the latitudinal lines. Why? He was a navigator. He wanted to be able to point from point A to point B and to be able to set his compass. In order to do that, he elevated or he, uh, made wider the areas furthest away from the equator. Well, you see those two rays? Those two rays represent the middle of the map, the center of the map. Oh, that's where the equator is, right? Wrong. The equator's way down there. What did he do? This map maker, as he opened up the latitudinal lines, took the whole world and he shoved it down so that his area would be in the center. The man's name is Mercator. He is a German. What's basically in the center of that map? Germany. That's right. This map is made with an A greater than B perspective focused on Germany. You want to see what the United Nations says the world should look like on a flat sheet of paper? Weird, isn't it? Africa is huge. South America is huge. North America, it's there. Europe, boy, it's just tucked away up there. You know, I had no idea the entire continental United States fits in the one country of Brazil. It does. But I've been seeing a distorted map my whole life. 
This is called the Peter's projection map. Now there's no way to take a flat, a spherical object and put it on a flat sheet of paper. That's impossible, okay? But this does give you a much better representation of what the globe should look like on a flat sheet of paper. Why? Because Mergator gave equal land mass areas to all the different nations. And he shows you examples of it on the other ones. He says, you, you see that black area? That black area is the northern hemisphere. That represents 18.9 million square miles. So what's that lighter gray area down below the southern hemisphere? What is that, maybe 15 million, maybe 16 million square miles? Wrong. 38.6, over twice the size, but you'd never know it on that map. Why? It's distorted. How about Greenland? Greenland is 0.8 million square miles. Wow, that's a lot bigger than China, right? Wrong. China's 3.7 million square miles, over four times the size. But you'd never know it. These three maps represent three types of Christian lives. This Christian says, I, 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 me, me, me. The world revolves around them. They pray to the Lord and say, Lord, I know you need Christian doctors. I know you need Christian lawyers. I think I'll be one. I'll make a million a year. I'll give half a million away to the church. But their real motivation is to live off the other half a million in a safe, comfortable, secure lifestyle. This Christian, without realizing it, has slipped into an A greater than B perspective as well. And so they're saying, Lord, what is your will for my life? How can I best serve you? What are my gifts? What are my talents? What can you do? How can you use me, God? And with that, it sounds so Christian. It sounds so healthy, but it's very me-focused. It's very self-centered on them. This Christian says, Father, I see what you're doing from Genesis to Revelation. God. Reveal your glory among all nations. Reveal your greatest glory by redeeming people from every tongue, every tribe, and every nation. If you want to use me, that's great. You want me to go to the nations, that's fine, I'll go. You want me to stay in my closet and pray, that's fine too. What's not so important is that I get used, but that your glory goes to the nations. Let me ask you this question. Which map best represents your life right now? Are you the I, 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 me, me, me type of Christian? Probably not. Not those type of Christians are watching this teaching on the Internet. But is it possible that you are caught up in an A greater than B perspective? You're looking at life in a distorted way. You don't realize it. You've only been reading half of your Bible, and you're missing half. That's what we're here to challenge you. Because your Bible is one book with one introduction, one story and one conclusion. Many Christians need to read it again for the very first time. Well, if you're not aware, if you're here in the States, you can purchase that map through our bookstore. You can also get the book uh, unveiled at last that you've been seeing over my shoulder all this time. This is the story of the Bible in book form. You may also be interested in Run with the Vision. Run with a Vision is my second book that I put out with Bill and Amy Stearns. Uh, where we help you to walk through what is the missionary call, how do you know if you're called, what about your parents, what if they don't want you to go, and all the various things that go with understanding what it means to be a Christian. Well, this series is here to ask you one question. Have you been focusing only on half of your Bible? Have you been reading a yearbook theology? Have you been so focused on you, you've been missing half? of God's Word. Oh, please, please, read your entire gospel. Read the entire Word of God. Get to know the full counsel of God. And then make good decisions for your life. Thank you.